Today I'm at Werribee Open Range Zoo. It is one of those glorious Melbourne days where the sun is shining and the weather's just perfect. Those of you who know Werribee well know exactly where I'm standing. I'm halfway between the safari bus on this side and the bistro on this side where you can get delicious food. What you probably haven't noticed when you've gone rushing down to catch your bus to go out on a wonderful savannah experience is that there's a little rope over there. And behind the rope is where our offices are, but it's also where our threatened species unit is located. Because here at Wirrabee Open Range Zoo, we're doing some incredible conservation work with a small bird called a plains wanderer. But rather than tell you about it myself, I'm gonna go and find somebody who knows a whole lot about this bird. So come with me, let's go see what we can find behind the scenes. I found Yvette Pellick who is a native coordinator here at Zoos Victoria and works with the Plains Wanderer. But Yvette, welcome. Hi, hi everyone. Now, natives coordinator, I'm sure everyone just doesn't even know what that means. Can you describe a little bit about what your job is? Yeah, absolutely. So I work as part of the life science team that looks after a lot of our native animals here at Werribee Open Range Zoo. And that can range from little threatened bird species all the way up to your emus and kangaroos and things like that. So as coordinator, I just help on the ground with keeping, but also help to do a few of those coordinating activities for events that are coming up. How did you get a job like this? What do you need to study? How did you get to be a keeper like this? So I studied at Monash University and did a double degree in science and primary teaching, actually. <laughs> so I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do at first, but fell in love with science, majored in zoology um, and environmental and bi um, conservation biology. So really loved all those sort of elements. Uh, I finally got a job at Zoos Victoria, got lots of experience, finally got my foot in the door and that was about 12 years ago and I haven't looked back so slowly been getting more experience keeping and slowly working my way through different areas and working with different animals. And one that's absolutely stolen your heart is the Plains Wanderer and I know this because I've seen you talk <laughs> very emotionally about this little bird. Tell us a little bit about it. What is a Plains Wanderer? So a Plains Wanderer is a very special little bird, very unique. They're a small ground dwelling bird that are found in semi-arid areas of Australia. Uh, they still have a stronghold in the northern plains of Victoria and in the riverine areas of New South Wales. But they can stretch up into Queensland and across into South Australia as well. But unfortunately they are struggling out in the wild like a lot of our uh, native animals in Australia. We do hear it a fair bit. So unfortunately with uh, development, uh, with the climate and more droughts and more flooding um, and also lots of cropping and changing of the environment, they have struggled a bit to survive. So they're a very, they need a very specific environment. So when we see what their challenge is, is when we change that environment, they just can't evolve. They haven't evolved to live in all kinds of different environments. Yeah, absolutely. If they were a generalist, they could probably survive with those changes a little bit more and cope with them. But unfortunately, Plains Wanderers are extremely highly specialised. They don't like grass over 10 centimetres tall. They like <laughs> gaps about 20 centimetres between the grass so they can move. They don't want trees within 200 metres of them. So yeah, they have a, a lot of very, very specific requirements to thrive. They're also special, not just specialised, they're also special because they're such a unique bird in terms of their genetics and their fi family heritage. Yeah, so if you look at them and their family tree, they're the last one left left in their family. That's how unique they are. There is no close relative left to them. Um, if you were to look at their closest ancestors that are still around, you'd be looking at seed snipe over in South America. Yvette, we have a species that's incredibly fussy, in a lot of trouble and incredibly important and you put up your hand to look after it. What made you do that? As soon as I heard about this program, there was absolutely no doubt. I put my hand straight up saying I want to be involved. I, I really want to do my research, learn about this species, go and go to other institutions and go out into the wild and learn about them so I can bring all that information back to Zoos Victoria and help set up that program. We've talked about loss of habitat, that's the main threat for this animal. But we now, when we look at the program, what are you hoping to achieve with the program? So the program's really important in so many different ways and it is a national program. Um, so we have other institutions like Taronga Western Plains Zoo, Taronga Zoo, Featherdale and Monato Zoo as well. So we're all in this together. And one of the really important objectives is to have an insurance population. So we want to have a certain number of birds in captivity just in case they take another hit in the wild. And then from that, we want to be able to release birds back into the wild. So having an insurance population is such an important part of what we're able to do. 
to make sure that if there's a population under threat, there's another second population that's safe. And then breeding for release, now how's that going? Because I think you've had a bit of success breeding Plains Wanderers. Yeah, so we weren't sure what we're going to get into, but we did receive our first birds in 2017 when we built our um, purpose-built facility for Plains Wanderers. And the first year of the season was really about learning what the best husbandry is for this animal. So really understanding the birds, understanding their needs. In the following two breeding seasons, we managed to produce 23 little chicks. And the little ones are super cute. Yeah. And then they grow incredibly fast. Yeah, incredibly fast. And the funny thing is that their leg size within a few days is the same as an adult. Within half an hour to two hours of being born, they're up and about feeding for themselves and running around causing havoc for their dad. Fantastic, now you said for their dad, and this is, <laughs> all right, to all the moms out there, you're gonna love this bit of the story. So what's the role of the dad and the mom in raising babies? It's actually the dad who does a lot of the parental care. So mum is quite dominant, <laughs> she's quite tall and big compared to the male. She tells him when she's ready to breed. Um, and then once they have a clutch of eggs, it's the male who will actually incubate and sit on those eggs. And he's the one who will raise the chicks. And mum's usually off with another male by this point. In an ideal world, the parents would raise their own chicks. And that's the, our ultimate goal is to get them to do it. Um, but unfortunately, in one circumstance, we did have to intervene and look after those eggs. And we artificially reared them in a specially designed incubator and we actually raised these chicks until they were ready to go back out into the enclosure on their own. To simulate the dad, we actually used a feather duster, which is a little bit different, but it just gave them a little bit of comfort and he would normally brood them, which means they sit under him and stay warm. And we used this feather duster as a way that they could run in and hide underneath it if they ever felt a little bit nervous. Now, I'm not gonna go down the route of talking about dads and feather dusters and being interchangeable, but what a great innovation from, from your side to actually think about what the little chicks needed and they didn't need us they need a surrogate dad what are your dreams for the species we're going really well you're breeding them strongly I know our facility is almost chock-a-block full of plains wanderers now what's next there's lots of work happening with the species both here and out in the field here we'd like to obviously continue breeding uh, down the track we'll get another facility so that we can really maximize our population here at Werribee Zoo and we'll keep learning about the species because even though we've learnt so much, there are still knowledge gaps and we still need to keep learning, keep doing research. So we're always learning. Down the track, we would love to look at releasing, but before we do that, we need to do some research. We need to do some trials. We need to do those sort of things to shape our release strategy. So that's our next step as well, is, is looking what the best way of releasing these birds will be. And saying that, we need habitat to release them too. So we have so many partners who are out in the field, landholders, uh, Trust for Nature, Parks Vic, there's so many, I shouldn't name them because I know I'll miss some, but there are so many people who are getting that land to that appropriate level and, and, and really looking after those sites so we have somewhere to release the birds. You mentioned some of our partners in this program and we've got some unlikely par partners. For such a fussy bird, they actually can tolerate um, cattle farming. Yeah, it's very strange. A lot of people would think that cropping and farming would both influence them, but farmers are actually helping us. Uh, we have a lot of really passionate landholders who run cows and sheep on their land, and they kind of use them like lawnmowers to keep the vegetation to that perfect level so that it's not too dense, but also not eaten down to nothingness. So they manage their cattle and they move them between paddocks to ensure that the habitat is suitable for Plains Wanderers. Thank you so much for all the work you're doing. I'm sure everyone's going to agree with me. The world needs more little, unique, strange, fussy birds. It really is an important project and we're really proud of the work you're doing. Thank you.